Hello to everyone at the conference. I'm Dr. Peter Greaves, OE Catapult Senior Structural Engineer for Blades. I'm standing in our large blade test facility, which is part of our National Renewable Energy Centre in Blythe, Northumberland in the UK. We also send technologies through for real world demonstration off the coast of Fife in Scotland at our Levenmouth demonstration turbine. This is a low risk and low cost way of trialling a technology to see if it can stand up to maritime conditions and it can act as a stepping stone to deployment at a commercial wind farm. Under a collaboration agreement with Vattenfall, we can then put successful technologies through to their Aberdeen Bay wind farm to see how the technologies perform at a commercial site. When we test blades here, we're trying to replicate the simulated loads that the manufacturer will have calculated during the design process for the blades. And they'll simulate literally thousands of different wind conditions, wave conditions, and many different combinations of the two. And then they take the extremes from those uh, simulations and we try and apply those to the blade here in what's called a static test. It's a huge amount of force we're putting through the blade. The other type of test we do here is a fatigue test which is aiming to replicate the 25 year design life of the turbine where we just bend the blade back and forth for perhaps two or three million cycles. That whole test process for a structural test for a blade can take nearly a year for a blade of, uh, of this size. The other type of testing that we do here for blades is rain erosion testing. We can do very finely calibrated rain erosion trials of different types of protection. As this blade test facility is currently the largest in the world, we've been asked to test most of the recent biggest blades that have uh, been manufactured. And the logistics of testing these blades can be extremely challenging. We've certainly learned a lot and become much quicker at performing these tests and handling the logistics of blade testing. So this is a section of wind turbine blade here, which is really great for showing you how they're made. So you have a pressure side, molding and a suction side molding and they're joined together at the leading edge and the trailing edge with an adhesive joint so the blades are hollow structure and that means that these shells can buckle you can see you've only got about sort of three millimeters of actual glass fiber reinforced plastic making up the uh, the shell of the blade on each side and that's sandwiching a balsa wood or pvc or pet foam core and the function of that core is to separate those two shells apart and give the, the, the shell of the blade more resistance to buckling, basically. Whereas the actual load-bearing element of the blade, which is the, uh, the spark cap here, that'll typically be made of a mixture of glass fibre and carbon fibre. Carbon fibre is about, well, it's a lot more expensive than, uh, than glass fibre, but it also performs much better structurally, so it's much stronger and it's much stiffer. So where it's needed, they, they now use carbon fibre to bring the weight of the blades down. We're here in the Composites Lab at Offshore Renewable Energy Catapult, which is where we do everything that requires the manufacture of composite samples. And currently that's mainly focused on making test samples for our rain erosion test rig, but also potentially uh, it could be making samples of different materials for structural testing. And, and this kind of thing at smaller scale or much smaller scale than at the, uh, the size of the full blade test facility. The industry is having this drive to make the blades longer and longer. So you have to change the materials and the design practices you're using in the blade. Otherwise, eventually there will be some point where you can't increase the size of the blades any further. But the industry has kept pushing that uh, limit back and back by improving materials and improving manufacturing and design practices. Composite materials have stood the test of time with, uh, within the wind turbine blade industry for 30 years or more now. There's no reason why that has to be the case forever. And so one of the big things is thermoplastic materials to allow the blades to be recycled much more easily. You could also think about options like the ACT blade, which is doing away with large parts of the blade structure and replacing them with fabric material like on ultra high performance racing yachts. That would also potentially remove large amounts of material from the blade. And another option is the use of natural fibers to reduce or eliminate the use of glass and carbon fibers, which would allow 
kind of a, a more sustainable approach to blade manufacture. And on top of that, there's reducing the amount of consumables that are used in blades. So there's lots of stuff happening right now in the industry because it's really starting to recognize that sustainability is an issue.